Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Ball again. And before I start talking about this beauty, I would like to say thank you. I would like to say thank you to all the people who supported me on Patreon. I mean, that's a real honor. That's a real pleasure to have you as my supporters. You are the one who's keeping this whole project alive. So thank you very much. I will serve it, I promise. That's a P56 Enfield rifle, an original rifle. You may know it from the American Civil War also, but it's a British rifle. And this is an excellent rifle for shooting because the bore is mint, is just excellent in this rifle, so it will make a beautiful historical shooting project for you. Modern time target shooters usually don't like the three groove version, the P56 version, because it has a slow twist bore, one turn in 78 inches. They prefer the five groove version with one turn in 48 inches. It is easier to find a good load for the uh, five groove version, of course, but my project is to find a good load for 50 meters and for 100 meters for this rifle. So follow me in this beautiful, beautiful project. But before we hit the range, let's get into the technical details first. The pattern 1856 Enfield rifle was the first two-band version of the long P53 rifle muskets. It has a 33-inch 0.577-inch caliber barrel. The two-band rifle version was issued to the sergeants of the Line Infantry Regiments, the Rifle Brigade and the 60th Regiment, and the Cape Mounted Rifles and the Royal Canadian Rifles. What you see here is a clear civilian model, which can be identified by the checkering on the grip. It is equipped with a standard folding long-range sight, the normal rear sight is good up to 400 and the ladder up to 1100 yards. The part with the V-notch is attached to the ladder with a small screw. Adjusting the windage is only possible with replacing this item. The P-56 rifle was intended to replace the old Baker and Brunswick rifles, which was used in the British Army prior to the adaptation of the mini -A system. This particular piece was manufactured in London by Blanche and Son, and probably in the late 50s. The family learned the art of gun making from such noble masters as Mortimer and Manton. The workshop existed up until 1942, when it was destroyed by the German bombers. The two band Enfield rifles are well balanced and very well made military guns. They are excellent for target shooting, but you need your best nerves to find the right load for these old ladies. The rifle musket firing a mini a ball was not invented by the British, it was invented by the French. So the development of the cartridge and the rifle, the Enfield rifle, is quite an interesting part of the firearms history. So let's learn a bit about this as well. The very first Enfield rifle was a close copy of the French Minier rifle. The old Duke of Wellington insisted on maintaining the old smoothbore musket caliber, so the new rifle had a large 0.702 inch bore. It fired a 680 grain 0.69 inch diameter smooth sided bullet, having no grease grooves helped the bullet making by pressing. The expansion of the skirt was aided by a metal cup. The rifle saw service in the Crema, but it was hard to load if the bore was fooled, so the results were not satisfying. When the Duke of Wellington died in September 1852, the new small bore rifle was already in the development phase. The P53 rifle musket had a lighter, smaller cartridge fitting tight in the 0.577 bore. It had a constant depth rifling with one turn in 78 inches twist. It fired a 0.568 inch diameter mini a bullet designed by Robert Taylor Pritchett loaded into the bore with the paper patching lubricated with six parts of tallow and one part beeswax. The bullet was easy and cheap to make as there was no iron cup in the skirt. But the cartridge was still not perfect for the Indian weather. The tallow melted away in hot temperature and without the lubrication the bore fooled quickly making the cartridge extremely hard to ram down. Also, the skirt of the bullet was too thin, so during transport it was easily damaged. Experts tried to solve the problem with modifying the lube and by adding a boxwood plug again in the skirt, but the final solution was to reduce the bullet diameter and to add the clay plug into the skirt again. The new 0.55 diameter bullet was accepted in 1858 and it was finally a perfect bullet. Even if it was much smaller than the bore, the accuracy did not suffer. Rifle muskets are quite picky when it comes to finding a good load and a good bullet and I have to confess that I spent six months to find the right loading procedure for this rifle as well. This is quite annoying sometimes so let me show you some details about this process. 
I started to shoot this rifle sometime in November last year and I tried four types of mini bullets sized to different sizes and three types of powder with at least four charges from each granulation. The best I could do was a 9 ring group at 50 meters which is nothing for competition. So I kept on trying, kept on searching until one day I seemed to find the right combination. The Lyman 575213 old style bullet backed with 40 grains of 1.5 Swiss powder finally seemed to shoot well. This is a very friendly charge of very little recoil. I loaded the bullet without sizing as it was cast and voila, it worked. So after spending many freezing hours at the range, I finally had a load that worked for at least 5 shots. But it was up to the next training sessions to check whether I can shoot at least 10 consecutive shots with the same load without losing the accuracy. It is very important to have a good loop for these rifles because you don't have the chance to wipe the ball between the shots on the competitions. So you have to really, really be able to control the fooling in your bore. Let's see if I could do it. Let's see the 50 meter target group first. The Lyman Old Style bullet is basically a light bullet with a thick skirt, so if you are after top accuracy, the diameter must be very close to the land to land diameter of the bore. Another advantage of this mode is that the grease grooves are very deep, they hold a large amount of soft grease made from tallow, beeswax and synthetic engine oil. Loading the rifle musket seems quick and easy, but if you don't respect the basic rules, it will never be accurate. First of all, weigh your charge by volume, each time the same way. After you pour the powder in the bore, tap it a few times to help it settle in the breech. Check each one of your bullets before loading. Use only the ones that are within 0.5% weight tolerance. Apply as many good quality lube as you can on the bullet, this is the key in keeping the fooling soft and to keep the accuracy for at least 13 shots. Never hammer the point of the bullet, it must go down with the weight of the ramrod. Always push the bullet on the charge with light, equal force. It is absolutely enough to tap it a few times with the ramrod. The 40 grains of 1.5 Swiss powder nearly had no recoil at all and the bore seemed to maintain accuracy even after 20 shots fired that day. Out of the 10 shots, 7 hit in the size of the 10 ring, having 5 in the same hole. Well, this 50 meter group is promising, so let's check it at 100 meters as well. A hundred meter is very far for open sights, but the group seems promising. The nine ring group is a good start, but it must be tested from the standard prone position as well later. So ladies and gentlemen, it seems like I have a good load for the rifle for 50 and to 100 meters, but I still feel that I have some more space for fine tuning the load. If you want to know more about the history and the modern time use of these rifles, then I would like to recommend you some sources on the internet that you can follow. If you want to learn more about the drills and tactics associated with British martial arms, visit the YouTube channel British Muzzle Loaders. Here you will find a huge lot of good quality info about the guns of the Great Empire. 
If you are after some info about the history of the British volunteer movement and the small bore target rifle shooting in the 19th century, you definitely have to visit the researchpress.co.uk site. It's just a great source of historical shooting stuff. And if you want to get some more information about another original P56 Enfield rifle, visit the website of my Norwegian friend Oivind, svartkrut.net. It's an excellent site. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the Cap and Bow YouTube channel and don't forget, stay cool and keep your powder dry. See you next time.